Israeli prime minister now making another threat, another nation, simply wants war, war, war. Here it is. This is a message to the people of Lebanon. Do you remember when your country was called the Pearl of the Middle East? I do. So what happened to Lebanon? A gang of tyrants and terrorists destroyed it. That's what happened. Lebanon was once known for its tolerance, for its beauty. Today, it's a place of chaos, a place of war. Israel withdrew from Lebanon 25 years ago, but the country that actually conquered Lebanon is not Israel, it's Iran. Iran which finances and arms Hezbollah to serve Iran's interests at Lebanon's expense. Just one day after the October 7th massacre a year ago, Hezbollah joined the war against Israel. It launched an unprovoked attack on our cities and on our citizens. Israel has a right to defend itself. Israel also has a right to win, and Israel will win. There's more. Here it is. You deserve to restore Lebanon to its days of tranquility. You deserve a Lebanon that is different. One country, one flag, one people. Don't let these terrorists destroy your future any more than they've already done. Stand up and take your country back. You have an opportunity that hasn't existed in decades. An opportunity to take care of the future of your children and grandchildren. You have an opportunity to save Lebanon before it falls into the abyss of a long war that will lead to destruction and suffering like we see in Gaza. It doesn't have to be that way. Each of you can take a step for your future. You know, when you kill thousands of children and women, the elderly, pregnant women, non-combatants, you kind of lose moral authority, Netanyahu, um, to lecture others about peace. Put up the picture full mass. I shared a few days ago that I had one of the most emotional and heartbreaking doctoral doctoral supervisory conversations I've ever had. I have a doctoral student who was in Lebanon. He's a university professor there. Because of what's happening right now, he did not have access to his laptop. He was inside of a warehouse, locked inside of a bathroom on his cell phone, attempting to communicate with me because he understands the importance of not only his education, but also his ticket to obtain more for him and his family. And he said, Dr. Ritchie, please share that we simply want peace. Please advocate for a ceasefire. So I'm going to do that. Obviously, I've been doing it. You know, these are people. These are human beings. They, they have families. They're beautiful people. And all of this war is ripping so many people apart. And, and when we talk about it in America or other nations discuss it that are separate from it, it's almost as if it's happening on a show somewhere. These are real, actual people. Put up the, the message. Netanyahu and his commentary has received criticism on social media with critics describing it as a threat and a serious escalation in the ongoing conflict. Quote, um, Peter Bernard said, outrageous and ominous. Reacted the, uh, reacted the Atlantic, excuse me, this Char uh, Charlie Nash from Media. Outrageous and ominous reacted the Atlantic, contributing writer and Financial Times editor, Kim Goddess. First, his supposed goal was to push Hezbollah away from the border so 
Israelis could return home. Now, the goal is for the Lebanese to free themselves from Hezbollah or face abyss of a long war that will lead to destruction and suffering like we see in Gaza, end quote. And then Peter says, remember when Netanyahu said Iraqis would become America invading their country? Now he's saying Lebanese will become, I will welcome, excuse me, Israel invading theirs again, again. This is psychological warfare. This is the pre-war before the war. There's always a case made for war. Every time a case is made for war, ladies and gentlemen, you can be guaranteed there are lies in that proclamation of the case because they need you to believe that war is a necessary evil among us, and it is not. War is not required. It is not necessary. And anytime you believe that war is simply a necessity of human existence, you have already fallen for the framing of their debate. Jackson, thoughts here? Well, uh, the one time that war is necessary is when you're conquering other people. You're mm. just flat out taking things from other people and ruling over them when you can't debate a solution and people don't want to give you what you're asking for. That's typically where war comes into play. Um, you know, Netanyahu is a terrorist. He's a paranoid psychopath. He's a theocratic lunatic, and he's easily one of the most dangerous human beings alive on the planet today, putting the entire world at risk just so that he can keep himself out of trouble. But in his attempts to keep himself out of trouble, he's just burying himself further. This man has zero interest in peace whatsoever. Anytime there's any opportunity for him to have a ceasefire, he doesn't take it. He won't take Biden's calls back. He has no interest in the lives of the hostages. It's been over a year since October 7th happened. It's like, what's October 9th today? A year and two days since that happened and not much progress has been made. And at the end of the day, I don't really understand who this dude thinks he is because what would Israel be if we didn't give them tens of billions of dollars all the time? If we didn't send them billions of dollars of weapons consistently, he wouldn't even be able to do what he's doing. And, and, and the way that he's talking, again, this dude, is he's out of his mind. He's sitting here t t telling the people of Lebanon to get rid of Hezbollah. Otherwise, I'm just going to come through and bulldoze y'all because I just want to expand the state of Israel. I mean, that's all that's going on. He's just trying to expand the state of Israel as much as he can and keep himself out of trouble by making himself more unpopular with the rest of the world. I don't know exactly how this is going to end, um, but one of the worst things about it is how to sleep at the wheel Joe Biden has been throughout this. You know, he'll come out with reports and he'll be like, disappointed in Netanyahu, but you yeah. keep giving him weapons. You know, so this is why Netanyahu is as emboldened as, as entitled as he is. And but again, the more he speaks, the more it's just clear that this man is completely out of his mind. He's playing a very, very dangerous game. And um the world more and more is realizing that he needs to go somehow. You know, however that's going to happen, that's he's putting himself in that position. But this dude is nuts. He's just completely insane. Yeah, it's completely. Um, it's, it's very sad. We'll continue to keep you updated on what happens in the region.